vertical structure of the atmosphere. What's shown in this figure are the various regions of the atmosphere together with a standard atmosphere temperature structure. And that standard atmosphere was set down in 1962 by the World Meteorological Organization. Clearly, day to day, the real atmosphere will vary quite widely from this standard atmosphere, but it gives us a handle on the basic structure. The atmosphere is split into various sections. The lowest 10 to 17 kilometers is known as the troposphere, and that varies seasonally and latitudinally, the depth of the troposphere. The troposphere is capped off by something known as the tropopause, which is shown here as a region where the temperature does not increase or decrease. It's roughly constant with height. What you can see in the troposphere on average is the temperature decreases with height. And the reason for this is that the surface of the Earth absorbs radiation more efficiently than the free atmosphere itself. And that energy is transferred to the thin layer of the atmosphere just above the surface by conduction, that is direct thermal contact. And then thermal mixing, turbulent motion, mixes the heat through the troposphere. So the temperature decreases through height. And it's in the troposphere where the weather occurs. And so it's that region of atmosphere that we're most interested in. Sitting above the tropopause is the stratosphere. And that extends to some 50 kilometers. There's some connection to the troposphere via thunderstorms, which transfers a little bit of water vapor up into the stratosphere. But otherwise, it's very dry. And atmospheric waves. And then you can see other layers of the atmosphere above that that we'll be less interested in in a forecasting course, the mesosphere and then the thermosphere. And once you get to the exosphere, you're really into free space. The key thing from the previous figure is the rate at which temperature decreases with height. And we're going to define that uh, rate of decrease with height. We're going to call it the lapse rate. The lapse rate will be indicated by the Greek letter gamma, and it's going to be minus partial dt dz. It's minus because typically the temperature decreases with height, and so a typical situation is going to have a positive lapse rate. As we'll see later in this course, the lapse rate determines the stability of the atmosphere and the potential for thunderstorm development, for example. When the temperature actually increases with height, the end result is that gamma will be less than zero, that is, we'll have a negative lapse rate, and we refer to that as an inversion. Inversions themselves have a profound impact upon atmospheric stability and motion, and on the types of weather that might be observed, and we'll study those in depth later.